this is it. This is the day we've worked for for months now. We have a frost coming tonight. We have to harvest a whole bunch of our vegetables that will not withstand the frost. So this week is gonna be a big week. I'm gonna be freezing garden vegetables. I'm gonna be drying garden vegetables and drying garden herbs. We have onions to harvest. We have cucumbers to harvest, tomatoes to harvest, and we have flowers to harvest among a few other things I'm probably forgetting. We have to get all of these things pulled today because the frost is coming tonight. These flowers will not withstand the frost. See these marigolds? We wanna start feeding these marigolds to the chickens. With all the marigolds, we wanna dry them. They'll be food for the chickens for at least a couple months. So we're gonna dry these in the cabin. We have the celery to cut. It can be stored in the refrigerator and we're going to dry a bunch of the celery. All of the basil is going to need to be harvested. We have a nice crop of basil. We're gonna make pesto with it. All of these tomatoes, I shouldn't have planted them here. I should have planted them up higher, but they're not gonna last the frost. They're, they'll be gone. So we have to pull all these tomatoes here and all these tomatoes down that way. And we have to get the tomatoes off the bushes. Actually, we could leave the tomatoes on the bushes and we could hang them in the cabin probably. Mm -hmm. We just have to find a way to hang them probably off the ladder in the cabin. We need to pull all the zucchini. We don't have to pull the plants. We just have to pull all the zucchini off the plants. We've got cucumbers here that are overgrowing. Shoot, they got too big. We got to pull all these cucumbers off the plants. There's a little calendula over here we can harvest. We have this fennel here that's ready to be harvested. We're going to dry all of these prongs. We're going to cut the fennel, the bulb, and we'll use it on fish probably. We have coal rabbi here that needs to be harvested. There's more tomatoes over here that need to be. Our pepper plants over there all need to be pulled. We're going to take the whole pepper plant. We're going to dry it upside down in the cabin. These. You guys can hear my new goats bellering. I bought two new goats yesterday, two boar goats for meat. <laughs> The sunflowers need to be pulled. The sunflower itself needs to be given to the chickens. We're gonna harvest the petals though for salves and lotions. Oh. I'm gonna put some back out Susan's there. Every time I start to work, a couple kids stop working and they just watch me. <laughs> supervising right now and making sure everybody stays on task and teaching them how we harvest. So with the peppers, the hot peppers, we're pulling the whole plant and we're gonna hang them upside down to dry. With the green peppers, we're picking them off the plant. They will ripen in a windowsill. Getting full. Yeah. Last year our pepper harvest was about five times bigger than this. I want everybody to pay attention here. See this tomato, kids? Mm -hmm. It's not fully red yet, is it? No. This is actually when it's best to pick them. People think that vine ripened completely are best, but it's actually better when you pick them just before they're ripe and let them ripen on your counter, okay? Way to go. A couple months ago, I showed you guys inside the cabin and how beautiful it was and how we got it all fancied up for guests. Well, I'm gonna show it to you today. <laughs> My husband hung this. This was the onion drying rack I showed you in one of the last videos and he hung this up on the ceiling for me so I could dry my flowers, the herbs, the peppers. I'm excited, I've got some more red peppers in there. So I'm just letting these turn red here and I've got, as you can see down over here, the tomatoes, a lot of them are still on the vine. I think they've been on the vine long enough. They've been on the vine for about a week now. So I think we can probably take all the tomatoes off the vine, then get these vines thrown out. Let's see what else. These are not dry. These marigolds are not quite dry, so we're gonna be feeding these to the chickens. It's gonna make their yolks nice. Uh-oh, we still have zucchini in here. I thought all the zucchini was in the house. <laughs> Onions. We 
We are drying onions on the floor right now because we're just kind of out of space. And then right here, we are doing our first bit of potatoes. Our potato harvest. Okay, well, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. We actually got a quite a bit of bugs eating them this year because we forgot to put the diatomaceous earth on. We've got some nice potatoes in here. Some of them are good and big. These are golden Yukon, it looks like. And then we've got some red Pontiacs. We had problems with the moles this year. We also got some potato scab. We had none of that last year. And there are also some, it looks like some cutworms or bugs got to them. That would not have happened had we got the diatomaceous earth on them soon enough. These also would be a lot bigger had we fertilized them sooner. We didn't fertilize them when we should have. They also did not get enough water this year. There can't be no light if darkness don't exist. He never left my sight. He showed me the way out of all the storms raging at the sea. He gave me back my life. I owe him everything. Well, you're rejoice, looking good and again. Oh, rejoice, boy. Rejoice in the name of the Lord forever and always. I rejoice, Hello, rejoice, rejoice in me at my worst I thank him every day I will put him first cause he did that for me he sacrificed himself so I could find my peace rejoice 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 Showed us the way I saw the flashes in the dark Colors on the wall Right against the monochrome Where I felt so small I drew the curtains up Pulled away the blinds Heard a rushing wind Through the windows of my mind And I began to glow With the love divine
rolled up like a cigarette The jacket didn't fit quite in The leather made me sweat Over time I shook it off Turned to face the breeze I learned to see it all at once God in the little things Shine, shine like smoke It lingers in the corners It slides like a ghost It comes a light from behind Beaming up from the unknown Dancing with my shadows Illuminating everything I can see the glow this scene, I'm making a roasted sheep pan vegetable lunch for my kids. This ended up being so, so good. It's taken me uh, quite a few trial and errors to learn how to create the perfect roasted sheep pan vegetables, but I believe that I have finally figured out how to do it. There are a couple tricks. One of the first tricks is if you're using potatoes in your roasted sheep pan vegetables, you want to boil them first. Whenever you roast potatoes, they taste so much better if you boil them, even just for about 10 minutes. They can tend to get dried out in the oven if you just put them straight into the oven. But if you boil them for at least 10 minutes, depending on the size, if they're super diced, 10 minutes would be too long. You wanna boil them just until they're barely fork tender. You do not wanna cook them all the way through, otherwise you'll end up with mashed potatoes when you roast them. But if you boil them until they're just fork tender, then roast them, they are just perfect. They stay just right on the inside and the outside gets a nice little tender crisp. For roasted sheet pan vegetables, use what you have. Right now I have an abundance of zucchini, tomatoes, onions, garlic, and potatoes. If you want, something that is really good to add to these if you wanted to make it a full on meal is that you can add sausage like andouille sausages that are chunked up or kielbasa sausage. I love leaving our garlic cloves whole for this because we are absolute garlic lovers. We love whole pieces of garlic. One of the nice things about this though is if there's people that don't like the garlic or anything on the dish actually you can easily pick through this and pick out what you like and leave what you don't like. If I'm putting larger tomatoes on here, I will cut them in half, but with the cherry tomatoes, just leave them whole. A good quality olive oil is one of the secrets to a perfect roasted sheep pan vegetable. My potatoes have been boiling for about 10 minutes and they are just perfect. You can see they're not starting to fall apart or anything. They're still firm. A little tip, 
you can put a garlic clove in with the boiling water to infuse the potatoes with garlic. And another tip is to be sure to salt your water when you are boiling the potatoes. If you want a nice crisp on these vegetables, you need to put a quite a bit of oil on them. And here's my next tip. You want to season these liberally. The seasonings are one thing that I notice most recipes go way too light on. I like to like quadruple the seasonings on mine. So I have got a lot of rosemary on here. There are so many different flavor combinations you can do though. One of my favorite is minced onion and dill with marjoram. That is my all time absolute favorite. If you want to add some acid to these, that is wonderful too. You can add some balsamic vinegar. You can add a little bit of lemon juice and you would do that before you add the olive oil. A crucial step in these is to roast them at a high enough temperature. So this oven is preheated to 450 degrees. It's a good idea to stir this a couple times during baking. I want to talk about another seasoning combination that we love. Sometimes we love to add olives and chili seasoning and paprika to this with a little bit of lime juice to sharpen. That's another one of our top favorite seasonings on roasted sheet pan vegetables. It is time for me to tackle all of this celery that we harvested from the garden. This is the best celery crop that I have grown yet. Fresh celery from the garden doesn't taste the same as the stuff in the store. It seems like when you get it from the store, it's older and quite a few of the flavor notes are just evaporated or gone. With this fresh garden produce, it's different. The flavors are more complex. They're richer, there are more flavor notes. So I like to grow celery because I am notorious for buying celery and not using it all. I'll use a couple stalks for the recipe or the mirepoix and then <laughs> the rest goes to waste. So I have learned to grow my own celery and dehydrate it. I even dehydrate the leaves. The leaves are wonderful when you're making chicken broth or beef broth. And then the celery is of course good in soups. So I have got an abundance of celery here and I am just tickled about this. I love to dehydrate this and use it all winter long. And since it's dehydrated, it's not gonna go bad on me. I'm gonna try to find either last year or the year before's video where I made celery salt with the leaves. I will put it in the cards and I'll try to remember to put it in the description below. Making celery salt with the leaves was definitely a good move. It was so good. You guys, I have a big announcement. I've been working double time lately on all kinds of big projects and a couple of them are ready. I've rolled them out. Friends, I am per subscriber request now on Patreon and I'm really excited to tell you that I am starting to roll out courses over there. You can find me there as Mountain Mama's Home. I've got a sourdough video over there, a chicken processing video, and just recently I rolled out a course or a class on beginner water bath canning basics. Over there is where I'm going to start putting videos and classes that I don't think would do that well here, but that I know quite a few of you still would like to have. I will link in the description below and probably as a pinned comment as well, where you can find more information on those courses and classes. Thank you so much for watching to the end and we will see you next time. I was birthed in the mountains under the sun